Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to work with forms within React. Let's jump right into the action. So within this same code pen that we've been working on, we're going to add a form that lets a user add a new pet to the list. So right above the list, right about here, there will be a form with three fields where you can type a pet's name, species, and age. Now we have a lot to cover in this lesson, and so typing out a bunch of boilerplate HTML is probably not the best use of our time. So let me switch tabs. In the resources for this lesson, you'll find a link called Copy and Paste Form Starter. As you can see, there's nothing new going on in this code. So we're not missing an educational opportunity by just having you copy and paste this. It's just a function that's returning a bit of JSX, and there's nothing interesting going on here. So right now, pause the video, find this starter link, and then from here, just select everything in the JavaScript column. Just select all of this into your clipboard. Okay, and then back in the code pen that we've been working on together, I want you to paste that in. In terms of where you should paste it in, maybe right below our, our app function. So just in a brand new function that's not nested in any other function, just paste in your clipboard. Okay, now that we've added this add pet form to our code, let's actually leverage it. So back up in our, our app function, within our overall JSX, right above the unordered list of pets, let's just add in add pet form, just like that. Okay, now if we check the preview area, cool, there's the form. Now before we worry about extracting whatever values the user types into these fields, let's first just respond to the event of this form being submitted. Let me show you what I mean. So let's jump back to the JSX for that form, right? So within our add pet form function, and on the opening form tag, let's do this. Let's add a prop named on submit, and that's an uppercase S for submit, equals, and then curly brackets, and let's make up a function name that we can create in just a few seconds. We could call it anything, but let's say handle submit. Okay, then within this function, but maybe right above the return line, we can just create a function with that name. So function handle submit, parentheses, curly brackets. Now the next 10 seconds have nothing to do with React, and this just has to do with the way that web browsers and JavaScript work, but within the parentheses for this function, we want to include a parameter. Let's call it E, which is short for event. Essentially, whenever you submit a form in a web browser, the web browser's default behavior is to send that data off to a new URL or to a new location, but we don't actually wanna reload the page. So we want to prevent that default behavior of the web browser. Now this event parameter contains all sorts of information about the form submit event that just happened. So to prevent that default behavior, we can just say e dot, and then call a method named prevent default. And again, this has nothing to do with React. This is just general web browser JavaScript. Okay, but right below that prevent default line, just as a test, maybe we have an alert that says Thank you for submitting the form. Okay, now let's test things out. So if we submit this form, perfect. We see that alert message. At this point, we need to ask ourselves, what do we actually want to do when the user submits this form? Well, from a React perspective, we'd want to take the values that they entered and update whatever state is driving this list of pets to now also include the data that was just typed into these fields. To make that happen, we actually need to step back from the form for a minute, and what we need to do is move our pet data to live inside the state of our, our app component. Let me show you what I mean. So up at the very top of our code, not living within any of our React functions, remember we have this array named pets, and it's just an array of objects, right? And this is what's driving that list of pets. Well, right now, do this with me. I want you to select the array. So from this opening square bracket here, select until the closing square bracket, 
and I want you to cut that into your clipboard. Okay, and then we can get rid of this const pets equals. And we want to move that data to live within state within this our app component. So up at the very top of that our app function, do this with me. Say use state parentheses to call it and in the parentheses just paste in your clipboard. Okay, so now React is responsible for storing this data. But remember, we want to be able to access this again later on. So at the very start of this line, say const and then square brackets equals inside the square brackets, say pets comma set pets. So ultimately within our app, you can still access the pet data from a variable of lowercase pets. So our pet list still displays just fine. Only now we have this function named set pets that we can call to update this piece of state. Maybe now the bigger picture is coming into focus. So when someone submits the pet form, we want to take the data that they just typed in and we just want to push it onto this array of state data. Well, we're not actually going to push or mutate this exact array. Instead, we're just going to give a new array to React and React can handle things from there. But the idea is that once we update that state, React will take care of re-rendering this part of the DOM. It won't even need to re-render any of the list. It will just render the new element that we just added to it. Enough talk for now. Let's put this into action. So let's go find our add pet form function. Here it is. And remember we set up handle submit. Now instead of showing an annoying alert, this is where we would want to update the state of the list of pets. However, we are about to run into our first real roadblock or challenge in terms of wrapping our minds around React. So really quick, if I scroll back up to where we set that state, right? And now we have this function named set pets that would allow us to update that state. Well, we need to recognize that this is only available from within this function, the our app function. At the moment, we have no way of accessing this set pets from within our add pet form function. Now there are many, many different ways to get around this issue in React, and we will learn about different strategies later on in the course. But for now, let me show you the simplest approach around this. Within our overall our app function, if we look at our JSX code, when we are rendering the add pet form component, we can just give it a prop of that set pets function. So right on this add pet form, let's just give it a prop of, we could give it any name we want, but let's say set pets and just set it to equal curly bracket set pets. Okay, now let's go within this add pet form function and leverage that. So here is add pet form. Within the parentheses for that function, we just want to include a props parameter. Okay, and now check this out. Instead of the annoying alert message, we can get rid of that. And what we actually want to do is just call props.setPets. And now before we worry about accessing whatever values the user types in, let's first just practice adding a new pet to our state with fake hard-coded values for its name, species, and age. So within the parentheses for set pets, we know that we want the new value to be based on the previous value. So we're going to give this a function. Let's use an ES6 arrow function. So we just need one parameter. Let's call it prev, short for previous, arrow symbol. And then we don't even need curly brackets if we just want to stay all on one line here. And we don't even need the word return. Now we don't want to modify the state directly. We're not going to get into the why behind that right now. It's too big of a topic for this lesson. But essentially, in React, you don't want to directly mutate the state. You just want to give React the new desired value and let React handle things from there. So we can begin working with the old array. Only instead of using a method like push, which would directly change it, we can use a method named concat. Concat will return a brand new array instead of modifying the old array. And we just give it a new item that we want to combine with the old array. So within these parentheses, let's create an object. So curly brackets. And now let's just give it fake hard coded name, species, and age just as a test. So let's say name colon. 
Let's give it a name of test name, comma. Let's give it a species, colon, quotes of dog, comma. Let's give it an age of two, comma. And for its ID, let's just give it a value of one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, if you need to pause the video to type this in with me, that's okay. But let's go ahead and test this out. So in the preview area, let's scroll down. We don't even need to type anything into these fields. Just go ahead and submit the form. Cool, notice that at the bottom of our pet list, we see that new object that we just coded. So now, instead of these fake hard-coded values, let's actually pull the values that the user has entered into the fields. Now this is actually where a lot of people get confused while learning React. Because remember, in React, the DOM is never our source of truth. So we are not going to manually read the values from these fields, right, directly from the DOM. Instead, we're going to listen for the event that the value of a field changes. And then every single time a field changes its value, we're going to store its newest value in state. So then that way, when the user actually submits the form, we don't need to go retrieve any values from the DOM. We can just work with data that is already in state. I realize that might sound really confusing, but once we see it in action, I think it'll make sense. So right now, let's jump into this. Dive back into the code with me and find our function that is named add pet form. Within the body of that function, so right about here, we want to create three new pieces of state. So type this in with me. Let's say const square brackets. We can name it anything we want, but let's say name comma set name and set that to equal use state. So we're just going to create one piece of state for each of the three fields. So the first field was the name. The second field is the species of the pet. So let's say const square brackets species comma set species and that should equal use state. Okay and then finally let's say const square brackets age comma set age equals use state. Okay, now let's go use these functions that let us update state whenever one of the fields changes their values. So if we scroll down to the JSX for the form, here's the first field, right? This is the name of the pet. So on this opening input tag, we can just add a prop named on change equals curly brackets. And now we could create a function with a name and then point towards that function or we can just include an anonymous function here. Why don't we actually just create an ES6 arrow function? So we would have exactly one parameter. Let's call it E for event. This contains all the information about the key press event that just happened. Arrow symbol. And then this is where we would want to call our set name function. So parentheses to actually call it. And then in these parentheses, let's pass it E.target.value. So again, E is the event that just occurred. Target is the element that just had the event happen to it, this input field. And then we're just grabbing the value from that input field. Okay, now in order to save a bit of typing, let's just copy and paste this for the species and age fields. So just select from on change to that closing curly bracket, copy that. And then on the species input, right after the input, just paste it in. All we need to change is instead of set name, this would be set species. And let's do the same thing for age. So right after the word input, paste it in and change set name to set age. Okay, at this point, we can rest assured that our state always has the most updated values from those fields. So check this out. Let's just find our handle submit function. And instead of these fake hard-coded values of test name and dog and age of two. Well, we can get rid of test name. We would actually just want it to point towards our variable named name. And in modern JavaScript, when the name of your property is the same thing as the value that you want it to have, you can actually just get rid of the value and the colon. So you can just say the property name, right? Because that piece of state that points towards that latest value is just name. The same thing with species and age. So for species, we don't need the colon and the value of hard-coded dog. We can just say species, same thing with age. 
And for ID, let's do this. Let's say ID colon, and then get rid of the hard-coded one through six, and just say uppercase date dot now, parentheses to call it. That will give it a unique number each time you create a pet. Okay, at this point, let's test out our form. So add new pet, let's say test cat. Species is cat, age is four. Go ahead and submit that. Cool, there we see it. However, what if the user wanted to add another pet? You'll notice that the old values are still in the fields and it would be nice if they automatically cleared out so you didn't have to manually delete these old values to add a new pet. So let me show you what we can do. Within our handle submit function, right after we add that new pet, still within that function, we can just drop down. And remember, we already have these conveniently named functions that let us update the state. So let's just update them to an empty string, like this, set name, just an empty string, set species, empty string, set age, empty string. Okay, now we just need to tell those input fields in our JSX to actually use the state as their value. So we just come down here. Here's the input for name. We can just give it a prop or an attribute of value should equal curly brackets name and then the species. So value equals curly brackets species value equals curly brackets age. Okay, let's test it out again. Come down to the form, test dog, species is dog, age is two, go ahead and submit. Cool, so not only was it added to our list, but notice these fields were automatically cleared out for us. And that's actually going to bring this lesson to a close. In our next lesson, we'll learn how to add delete buttons next to each pet so that you can remove a pet from the list. And we'll also learn how to set things up so that when you reload the page, any new data that you added is not lost. Now that feature of persisting the data doesn't have anything to do with React, but we're going to learn about it because it's a great excuse to learn about a tool in React named useEffect. useEffect does not inherently have anything to do with persisting data. useEffect is simply a very useful tool that can be used in a million different types of situations. And learning how it works is a huge part of moving forward with React. Let's keep things rolling and I will see you in the next lesson. To get immediate and lifetime access to the full 15 hour video course, you can find a heavily discounted coupon link in the description for this video. Thank you so much for watching and take care.